Hello and welcome back everybody to Join the Tariq season number 3. It is the American Division 2 Los Precarditos vs Thundercats in a two game series. And we are already at game number 2 as well. The Thundercats, they just completely stormed the first game and well ended it. So I think it was 21 minutes in. So we'll see if Los Precarditos they can do a little bit better. So far they have picked up the Death Prophet so maybe going for a Death Ball kind of push. But regardless, my name is Coacher and I am once again joined by Grandis V. Yeah, I don't know, these uh, first bands look very familiar, but my goodness, those first two picks from Los Bricarditos, they are going all in. If they don't win this game before the first uh, 25 minutes, they're going to be looking in a pretty bad situation. But that said, I don't know, Thundercats, their late game isn't all that great either, so I'm, we're probably looking at a fairly clashy game, uh, probably come about 15 minutes, once people get their first major items online. Yeah, it definitely can be so. Brewmaster, of course, is decent enough against pushes. Just go in, pop the primal split, and hope for the best. Of course, later on in the game, I think Death Prophet is actually a hero that scales rather well into the late game as well. The Exorcism just is such a strong tool, especially once you get that on level 3. And just tank yourself up, have the Exorcism do all the dirty work for you. And Thundercats, going for some small or minor push of their own as well, of course. Check Hero, having the Liquid Fire has a pretty decent amount of counter pushes. Set down the Macro Pyre if need be. And of course, more push was panned out by Thundercats, Shadow Shaman and the Nature Prophet, so not really surprised by those pans. Los Precarditos taking out the Rave King and the Mirana, but an Alchemist once again for them. Really favoring that cure, which is something that we don't usually see. Um, I don't know, last game it didn't really feel like the Alchemist was super effective after the first couple minutes of the game. They had one or two really good ganks with him, but after that he just didn't really do anything. I didn't really see him abusing his ancient stacks very much, mostly due to the fact that most of the tier 1 towers were down very quickly. Um, so maybe this time they'll be able to have this alchemist shine a little bit more. Yeah, maybe. Last time around it definitely didn't do too much for them. So, like I said, we'll see if he can shine more, at least a little bit this time. So, the Thundercats, fourth pick about to come out. They have one support, two cores as well, so... Actually, judging from the Brewmaster pickup, I guess for some teams it can be the offlane role as well. Maybe even the safe lane if they want to go for an aggressive tri lane. But they might just go for that uh, Viper tri lane again, like last game. Yeah, I don't know a lot of options for the Thundercats so far. Uh, personally, I'd like to see um, something a little bit, I don't know, more late game oriented with their third core. But at the same time, they could just go for something hyper aggressive. They can jump onto the Death Prophet very easily to go in with the Brewmaster. Uh, as well, but they're gonna go for the Shadow Fiend. I like this pick, and more than likely is going to be up in the mid lane. And as long as they have ways to keep the supports busy, possibly by going aggressive with the Viper and leaving the Brewmaster towards the safe lane, uh, I think the Shadow Fiend could work out very well for them. Los Precarditos are gonna go ahead and pick up the Rubik. Currently, there's several spells that are very good to steal. Viper's Ultimate is 100% steal, the easiest spell to steal in the game, along with Wraithfire Blast. Uh, Brewmaster's Ultimate's great if you can get your hands on it, but usually at that point in the team fight, it's already over. Uh, Jakira has some good spells if you get your hands on a Clutch Ice Path, and I don't know, there's just uh, good stuff all around. Yeah, there certainly is, and with the Shadow Fiend, I mean, I guess the Shadow Races, they don't cost all that much. I was just thinking like Pagna, maybe with the Nether Ward can be a pain in the ass. But I think Shadow Fiend, he should be fine about it. Especially since they do have the Brewmaster and... Brewmaster is a hero that can actually use his Brewlings as well to just scout down the Nether Ward and kill it to just help out the team in the fight. I usually love when a team has something, anything at all to just deal with the Nether Ward. Yeah, it's just so annoying to play up against. And yeah, destroying it before the fight begins or at the very beginning, just send one of your pandas Probably the storm one. After you cyclone somebody up, you can use the wind walk to scout through uh, the woods or wherever the uh, Pugna place the ward. Uh, but yeah, a good option for them. Indeed, the Thundercats spanning out the Time Doctor now as the last one. They don't really want to face that and lose pre as well. They do need themselves an offlaner as well. Or solo safe laner, depending if they want to go aggressive trialing with the Pugna, which I, mm. I really don't think they will. Yeah, I don't think so either. I'm presuming that that's going to be a. Uh, Pugna towards the safe lane with the Rubik and Alchemist uh, sitting with him. If they're able to make enough space for the Pugna, uh, maybe the Rubik and Alchemist are going to be able to roam. But, I don't know, more than likely the Rubik's just going to be sitting and babysitting the Pugna the majority of the time. Uh, Los Precarditos really needs something to jump into uh, the Thundercats lineup to start fights. Uh, destroy the Brewmaster before he gets his ultimate off or jump on the Shadow Fiend uh, before he's able to start dishing out the damage. Um, that can be really detrimental in those team fights. I'd like something like a Centaur, possibly, 
Um, but at the same time, uh, it's not that great. On the dire side, landing could be uh, fairly difficult for them. We'll just have to see what they're uh, thinking of. Yeah, it's definitely, I have to agree with the point on that they just at least would or would be able to just make great use of that hero that just gets the jump, gets the initiation for them. It's just so crucial if you want to go for the towers, exactly like you yeah, mentioned. But wow, well. a Sven pick up for the Thunderclats. Cats. It's going to be a support one, at least most likely, unless they pull off something extremely crazy. But man, what do you make of this support? Okay, well, Wraith King was already banned out, uh, so that's really the reason why I think they went for this Sven. Uh, as a support, he kind of functions as a weaker Wraith King support with a really solid Thanks. single target stun and. Okay, uh, hold that thought as we have a last pick, Clanks, coming up from Los Bricarditos. This was com I <laughs> completely out of left field. I was not anticipating this hero at all. Uh, but if Los Bricarditos are able to get ahead early on with the Pugma and Death Prophet after their laning stage, uh, this Clanks could run rampant, but I don't know. They're just going to be really weak on the first couple minutes of this game. This roaming Sven Jakiro can really do some work. It definitely can. I mean, this Clinks, it definitely was kind of a sucker punch here, like... I have no idea where that came from. And to be to Klinks, at least he's pretty good in pushing towers as well with the searing arrows. But that's about it. And I'm just really curious about their laning phase now. Since if they send the Klinks off lane solo, it just I, I might be so. so hard. Yeah, I don't know. If they pick up like one set of dust, Klinks laning stage is pretty much over. Uh, one of the good benefits of having the Klinks is he's a natural orchid carrier up against the Brewmaster. That's always nice. But I guess we'll just go ahead and introduce the teams. I'll go ahead and introduce the Radiant team. We have uh, the Thundercats, the people who are able to take game one. Uh, well, we're going to have Bane, or Bang, excuse me, playing on the Viper with Salen, playing on the Sven. The Jakira is going to be taken up by uh, Crystal Did. Oh. Chrysalid, and then we're going to have a Brewmaster played by DX, and the Shadow Fiend's going to be taking up Reality, who had an amazing TA game one. Yes, and for Los Precarditos on the dark side, Klinks will be played by Link, leaving Slender to play the Rubik, Turp once again on that Alchemist, as Nate17 will be on the Pagna, and leaving Citrix to be the last one for them on that mid lane Death Prophet, and actually once again, he really favors that kind of build on the Ember, he went for the exact same Buying up tangos, one clarity, and three iron branches. That's definitely something just special to that player, I think. Yeah, very peculiar. It does give him a little bit more mana to spam out those crypt swords, but usually if you, um, I don't know, maybe get two tangos pulled, maybe have some branches, and just spam out one or two crypt swords, you can get your bottle very quickly. I don't know, an interesting build to be sure. Yeah, it's just, I mean, is that one clarity? gonna be as helpful you're probably gonna get the bottle brush anyway but I guess maybe it's just calculated or we will see as there will be once again aggressive tri lanes from each side once again we won't see any tri lane versus tri lane action yeah I don't know this pugna up against the brewmaster brewmaster has a decent time up against him mostly due to the guaranteed crit and just being able to zone him out with the thunderclap so i think that this trial is going to stay together a little bit longer uh than that of uh, tc with the uh, sven and jakiro they can leave the viper pretty much solo up against the clinks for the majority of the time um, as long as they kill him once or twice to start things off and then start wreaking havoc on the map but for now uh jakiro's actually making his way towards the middle lane yeah, I guess he just wants to put some pressure on Death Prophet as early as possible. And it's nice because Aww. Shadow Fiend, he struggles the most just in the early game when he doesn't have any Necromaster stacks, but suddenly he's up to 4 already, so doing really well, just space created, I guess. Of course, he went for the Wraith Band straight up as well, just to get those extra little stats, extra damage, and already the supports have rotated around both of them, even Salen making his way to the bottom lane, so there's just confident in the ability to, for the Viper to just solo the Clinks anyway. Um, do you know what's up with these uh, two wards coming up from the Dire team? They dropped two sentries over inside the Radiant Jungle, only blocking the single camp. Um, and even that for not very long. What do you think were they expecting? Maybe like a Jakiro jungle? I think they just wanted to stop the Shadow Fiend from stacking things up and flash oh, sure later on. Although, like I mentioned, they only got one camp actually. I do believe the sentry in the trees here should have been placed in the little hole just below. And that actually hurts them quite a lot, because that's still 100 gold wasted for that one camp that didn't even get blocked. And the big, bigger camp, which didn't get blocked, of course, gives more gold to the Shadowfin as well. So, kind of backfired there. 
I don't know. I think this choice by uh, Lotusbreaker Breaker Diaz to put the Pugna in the aggressive trial is going to bite them a little bit, just with the great start that Shadow Fink's having, but it looks like he might have some action. Alchemist is charging up a stun. He wants to make a turn, but they're not in range, and he's going to end up stunning himself. Luckily for them, uh, the Thundercats don't have enough range in order to get the Sven stun or the Ice Path coming out from the Jakiro to capitalize on that and get a kill. But here comes a triple Thunderbolt uh, coming out from the Sven with a double Ice Path as well as the Thunderclap coming down the Pugna. Looks like he's going to be the first to fall. DK gets one more auto attack off onto him and Slender. Looks like he's also going to die. The Alchemist, the only survivor in this bottom tri lane. Man, Thundercats, once again they do it. They start 2 0. But man, this Stormhammer from Sven just set everything up. I can't believe it actually hit all three heroes in the trial lane. It was just on the very edge. Like, that was probably the most perfect Stormhammer you're ever going to see. Yeah, that, that was just so ridiculous. I was like, what? And then the Ice Path, I do believe, caught two as well to follow up. And since Shakira was level two, actually had one point of Liquid Fire as well, which was pretty damn helpful in actually bringing down the Pagna. So, well done by them. And with this, the trial lane suddenly, they have the level advantage, of course. And with a level advantage, they can just probably go for more kills, especially since Derp is low on mana as well. Yeah, another Stormhammer being thrown the way of the Pugna. Just look at the damage coming out with those two nukes thrown out and a couple more attacks was all that they needed. Alchemist is throwing a stun mostly to disengage, but the body box coming out from DK. It looks like they're going to be able to get the Alchemist. Maybe they're chasing him to the tower and just look at that Brewmaster go. They have the Ice Path from the long range and Shigaro actually gets the last hit with that 50 magical damage. Yeah, they're just completely dominating this bottom matchup now. I mean, is is it coming to a point of Los Procreditos where they should just cut their losses and maybe just rotate their supports around, try to make something happen on the other lanes? or Because this just isn't working out and they might be just losing more and more heroes if they come back. Yeah, I really don't like this choice from Los uh, Procreditos. I think you leave the clinks down in bottom maybe to soak experience because that's really all he's doing in top anyway. Up against the Viper, he has 10 CS, which is decent, I suppose. Um, but still, this Pugna can't be left alone, really. And if he's left alone, all he's going to be doing is soaking experience. Uh, currently, we do have a smoke coming out from Slender, as well as Derp W. Um, but it looks like, I don't know, Haster picked up by the Chikira, no way they're killing him. Yeah, Derp gonna stun himself again from this because of the Haster. Oh, run. look at that Ice Path angle. He's not gonna be able to get it because of the lift, but actually he's going to be able to catch out Slender. No follow-up from the Sven, they're over by the tower. Uh, so in the end, I don't know, a little bit of hype for nothing. By the way, what, what do you think of TK, the Brewmaster, going for those power threads? I would have thought like you're in a tri lane situation, you're gonna go for Arcane Bow, just have the Sven spam out the Stormhammer constantly and what have you. But power threads? Thoughts? Uh, they give him a decent amount of damage. I would have liked the Arcane Booster just saving up for a straight-up blink better, but in the meantime, we have a stun going the way of the Pugna with the Ice Path to follow up. They won't be able to chase him down, however. The Alchemist stun disengaged this time, just a little too far under tower. Yeah, now suddenly Sven, he's out of mana. Oh, never mind. The clarity comes he's out. Clarity. I think it was for the Jakira, but he loses it. Oh, tower. He has stick charges. Let's see. 60. He should have enough for one storm hammer. I guess that's all he needs as well. And I mean, Rubik, of course, he is staying or was staying at least a little bit farther back just to help out with a defensive telekinesis if need be. And just look at his uh, skill build as well. He has one point into each. That's something you don't see all too often, to be honest. Just going for an ult this early on. I don't know. It's 5% magic resist. I'm not sure if that's entirely worth it. Uh, but, I mean, you just saw how fast that Pugna died. Uh, to the Stormhammer and the Thunderclap, that's pretty much two-thirds of his HP. We're going to have another stun thrown away. The Sven, Ice Path, not going to connect on anything. Pretty much just a zoning Ice Path. The Stormhammer, again, onto two heroes with the Liquid Fire. They just don't care about this Pugna War. The Alchemist is going to fall after the Rubik, and the two supports are going to be wiped in this bottom lane. 6-0 to zero our kill score, and Thundercats just rolling them in this bottom lane. Yeah, and... I mean, that's what we talked about as well, or discussed about like one or two minutes ago, that should Los Picarditos just be coming back to this bottom lane, tunnel visioning it? No, they should not. They're behind 6-0. I mean, Brewmaster is level 5 compared to the Pagana, who's level 3, almost about to hit level 4. It just isn't working out for them, and Pagana, you need levels. You need that level 7 for the maxed out push from the Nether Blast, of course. And of course, you want even more, because you want the Nether Ward to also be maxed out. Yes, Netherworld overall is pretty damn annoying, but when it's level 1, it's not too scary at all. And Shakira mid lane, with that Invis rune, we might see some more kills. 
Oh, well, looks like Shakira is just gonna swagger off towards the top, but we do have the two dire supports sitting behind the Death Prophet in mid. Uh, getting killed in the Shadow Fiend at this point, a lot of the damage has already been done. Their Sentry Wards have worn off in the jungle, and he's just farming incredibly well. 44 and 15 compared to the 25 and 4 of the Death Prophet, and sitting at the top of the net worth chart as well. Reality just hasn't been touched this uh, lane with the amount of time that the Dire is committed to the bottom lane. Um, honestly, the way that this bottom has gone for the Pugna, I almost would have preferred a support Pugna up in top with the Clinks. Um, but I guess another lane that we haven't talked a lot about is the top lane uh, with the Viper and Clinks. Both are sitting decently well as, ex uh, as far as experience. Oh, mid lane they go oh, yeah. with Sven. Stormheim rushing onto the death road once again. A two man stun. Will it be enough? Reality comes in with one shadow raise. No, they back off. They just, the initiation was a little bit too spread by TC. And Silent now might fall down one stun. Something slows. Nope. Not gonna come out. Yeah, Liquid Fire, or Dual Breath, excuse me, comes out from the Jakiro. Actually not going to clip anybody, but had they chased down, uh, they wouldn't have been able to connect with the Sven. Uh, so a lot of rotations towards mid, but no kills are going to come out of that, and they actually moved the Pugna off of bot. Oh, top well lane actually, bang, going yeah. for the solo kill, got the Viper Strike, had dust on him as well, and Clink, so well, slow down, no Skeleton Walk will help you, and actually really love the bang, just cut himself the dust to go for the solo kill. That is something that a lot of, at least in pops, the carry players, they're like, yeah, support, you have to get all the detection. But if you can go for a solo kill like that, just totally worth it. Yeah, I think that's just a great twist coming out from the Viper. Um, but, I don't know, the push is going to come out in mid lane. They have level 1 Exorcism as well as level 2 Pugna Blast. So they're going to put a little bit of damage, but level 1 Exorcism, level 2 Pugna Blast, really not all that exp uh, exp uh, Excuse me, they're going to set up to Rubik and be able to focus it down. One more auto attack is all they need. They get it from the Sven. They drop the Brewmaster split, but on the back lines of the fight, they're trying to chase down the Pugna Ice Path. It's going to be off the mark, but they'll throw him in the air. Persian back down. They throw the Boulder Toss his way as well. Nicely comboed. Now the Storm Hammer comes out from the Sven. They're going to be able to kill the Pugna another time in this game. 9 and 0. All across the map yeah this is absolute steamroll happening at the moment and to be honest one thing i wanted to ask you as well is that i mean mid lane matchup shadow fiend against death prophet i really do not believe that the shadow fiend should be winning as hard especially considering that the support rotations really didn't happen at all i mean 69 and 16 compared to 32 and 4 I don't know, Chikiro did zone out the death prophet a little bit level one through two liquid fires this way but i don't know just I don't know, very well played by Reality, outplaying their mid player yet again, um, as far as just the early laning phase is concerned. And now he has the Midas online after the Wraith Band and oh, the Boots. Bang, going bottle. for another solo kill, Clinks, trying to hide out in the trees, not gonna happen. Not a chance. TPN coming up from the Death Prophet. Death Prophet needs to be careful. There's a Sven inbound as well. Salen, he has a stun available. He's going to throw it. Now he has a God Strength. Viper, a little bit of miscommunication. He's going to back down. But will the damage be there? It should. With the God Strength online for Salen, he'll be able to pick up another kill. 11 and 0. Pugna's rotated up top. Will he be able to catch anybody out? It looks like Bang might be in trouble. But the blink in from the Brewmaster, he's going to put the Pugna down very low, especially with that guaranteed crit. They only need one more and double kill for Salen. Will he be able to cage down anybody else? They don't have a point in the Drunken Haze and a stun being shown by the alchemist this could be scary for them well, let's see they're going to stun up this fanny as the storm hero bubble link as well as the thunderclap is going to be enough to clean the rubik up and now another stun being thrown away of derp and he's going to die as well triple kill for salen killing spree for the brewmaster 14 and 0 10 minutes in i mean i i really don't even want to look at the graphs shadowfin takes the mid lane tower as well and looking at the graphs well, i guess 10k gold lead 10 minutes in and of course, almost an 11k XP lead already as well. Just look at the tri lane of Lost Precarditas. Level 3 on both the supports, level 4 on the Pagna, whereas everybody in TC is level 6 and above. So that just already tells the story of this game, to be honest. And oh, it's done onto Crystalite. Do they actually have enough Pagna? Netherworld down, but the Ice Path is there. Bang, suddenly arrives. Viper Strike onto Nate. And Pagna will just ran to his own death. That was such a hopeful uh, kill on the uh, Jakiro. They threw a very short range stun. The Pugna should have just backed off. I think the Alchemist was pretty much just trying to get rid of that potion before it blew up in his face. Yeah, I don't know. Questionable play coming out from them. The Viper probably didn't even need the Jakiro there to kill the Pugna, but yeah. I don't know. Just a, mo a moment of desperation coming out from Los Precoditos. <laughs> Indeed, just. I think that's the best way to describe it. Now, Crystalid, once again, he's just pulling everybody out solo. I mean, solo Jakiro, everybody. Backs off immediately and I mean to be honest, I think stats wise there's no coming back from this. I do believe when you have a 10k plus gold and XP lead 10 minutes in, statistically there hasn't been a comeback from this ever in Pro Dota, so I mean maybe Lost Precarditos they're gonna be the first ones, but it's looking grim for them. 
Yeah, I know. I think your bigger hopes are uh, that they won't have a perfect game on the side of Thundercats, not going zero. And then the hope of the chat is that we have 32 to 2 as the kill score. Alchemist down bottom. They're going to pop the drum charge, I believe, uh, from the spend. Now they're going to be able to cancel that TP just blown up by the storm hammer. Yeah, they're just. I mean, they hit, they hit their stride already in game number one, and just really it feels like they carried the momentum over. Usually, it doesn't happen that way. It just. Every game is different, but TC looks like they beg to differ. Definitely. We had a Brewmaster split in the middle lane. He's going to kill the Pugna. Just easily comboed down. He uses the Windwalk on the Storm Panda. Trying to chase down the Rubik as well as those 522 movement speed heroes. He's going to lift up the Fire Panda. He's going to rejoin himself and might just try to commit for this kill, even though there's three heroes. He's going to blink away. Uh, just biting off a little bit more than he can chew. He's going to be set up by a fairly long uh, stun concoction, but the Storm Arrow comes out from the Sven. DK's just going to turn and fight this. Citric is falling too low, and now Derp W just eating swings from the Sven sword with God's strength. He just doesn't care. Slender is going to be decrept up to save him for a little bit longer, but it's only going to save him for a little bit. They're playing Ring Around the Rosie Storm Hammer. Now they change to the Sven. Blink, Thunderclap, <laughs> dead Pugna. GG. Holy crap, man. 21-0. Oh, wow. This is just utter domination. I, I, I literally thought that this Brewmaster is gonna die now, but no, even that didn't happen. Oh wow, I, I'm just completely speechless, just blown away by this game. Yeah, first game, I thought that one was fast, but this one was just an utter stomp. Perfect win for Thundercats, not a single kill given the way of Los Precarditos. Yeah, the support Sven, 10, 0 and 5, and what a game. And, funny enough, Shadow Fiend, he wasn't part of a single kill, zero, zero, zero. Just kept on farming the entire game, not even needed. Four versus five, easy game. <laughs> well, pretty much. Uh, that'll be it for me, but I believe there's another two-game series coming up afterwards that you'll be casting with Whiplash. I can't remember the teams that are going to be in that, um, but yeah, I'll leave it to you to sign us off. Yes, guys, like Grandis just said, there's going to be another game. It's going to be No Fear Dota versus Maru-chan in about 1 hour and 15 minutes time so don't go anywhere, I'll keep the stream running probably, no point to just close it, maybe even play a game of Dota, just go full on noob but if you enjoyed us, please be sure to follow us as well on this channel as well as Hefla TV too on Twitch and just check out our social media to know when we're going live, with what games and what have you it's all Hefla TV on Facebook, Twitter and VK for the Russian viewers if there are any at this point in time, which they probably shouldn't be but of course, I mean, huge thanks to GrandisV for casting with me and be sure to follow him at, at GrandisV on Twitter, if that's correct. That is correct. Yes, so guys, be sure to follow him, leave some feedback if you want to just praise him, whatever you want. But guys, this is just us signing off now, some music as we wait for game, or not game number two, the next series to actually begin. So guys, see you in the next series.